Hey, and welcome to the examples of Joins and Kafka Streams TV show. Well, actually, it's not a TV show. It's a screencast, but TV show sounds much better. So if you don't mind, I'm going to call it a TV show. In this TV show, we're going to go over some of these examples. And in order to run these examples or modify these examples yourself, you'll want to download the source code. Let's start there. As you can see on my screen, we're looking at a GitHub repo that is available up here at username T McGrath. And the repo is Kafka Streams. Wherever you're watching the screencast, it should have been accompanied by a text description of the tutorial. And included in that description are links, including the link to this GitHub repo. So make sure you're watching the screencast from wherever the text description is also included. This includes links and much more that I'll cover later in the screencast. If you're familiar with GitHub, you know what to do. Clone it. If you're not, you can also come over here to this green button that's over here on the right and you can do download and you have this download zip option. So there's a couple of different ways to get the source code. Choose whichever one works best for you. And then next, after downloading it or cloning it, you'll want to import it into IntelliJ. So I've got that teed up here. I don't go over actually how to import it into IntelliJ because I have so many other IntelliJ related tutorials. If you have any questions about how to do this, just take, take a look around the site. You'll find another tutorial on how to do it. Um, do it meaning importing an SBT based project into IntelliJ. Um, lots to cover, lots of lots of resources for you there. So I'm not going to cover it in this screencast. What I am going to cover are essentially two things. The first one is the implementation of the join examples, and that's in Kafka Streams joins. And the method that we use to call these examples is through a Scala test, and that's contained multiple Scala tests actually. That's contained in Kafka Streams join spec. So Kafka Stream Joins is under Source, Main, Scala, Com, Superglue, Kafka Streams Joins. And if we look at this class, we'll see that it contains a bunch of functions. And the names of these functions are hopefully indicative of what they are trying to accomplish. So for example, it's a K table to K table join. It's a K table to K table left join, outer join. I think you get the idea here. Um, and then each one of the function has a different type of implementation, like left join here, outer join here. Maybe these my fancy screen pointer can help. Each one of these then goes through top to bottom uh, in the implementation in Kafka Stream joins as we make our way through the various patterns and usage of abstractions like K table or K stream or K stream to global K table. Again, this screencast has a, a description, a much longer tutorial around it that talks about these things like K table, K stream, and global K table. So if you have more interest on that, definitely read up the tutorial. Okay, the next thing we're gonna show is the Kafka streams join spec class. And in this case, what we're doing at the top is setting up some commonly used either fixture data or some um, various things like Java-based collections that we're gonna use in our Scala code. And then we get into the actual tests. And again, I've tried to name it, hopefully indicative of what we're trying to accomplish here. So K table to K table inner join. We're gonna call the implementation and then we're going to pipe in some data to the topics in question. We're gonna retrieve a key value store because in our implementation, we have stored the results of our stream processors into a named, um, into a named store, which we were going to retrieve here. And when we have the results, we can use that to perform our tests with expected results like expected result, expected result with the should be's here. And you'll see this pattern throughout. You'll see the expected results are different depending on the type of join we are performing. 
Again, the patterns here are very similar to topology, topology test driver, pipe some data into two topics, retrieve a key value store, perform some tests. Some of you might be thinking that there's some code duplication here, and you might be right. Um, I erred not on the side of brevity, but the intention was more towards clarity, uh, and clarity of me led itself to maybe maybe cutting and pasting a little much, bit more than if this was production code, but this is test code, and we're trying to be as clear as possible for what we're trying to accomplish. So with these Scala tests then, and a way that you can run them in IntelliJ is simply going over to the left-hand side here, right-clicking on it and saying run. And by running, you'll see then that we go through each one of the tests. So in this example, we have all the tests that are running. We can also, I'll fire up an SBT shell too and have this start initializing because I want to show you that we can run the tests from SBT shell or even outside of IntelliJ and the SBT REPL, again, or shell, whatever you want to call it. You can run tests from there as well. So we can do that. And it will run through compiling it and then it'll run through the test. Now, one thing I should tell you um, is that there, there's a there's a nuance here that I haven't figured out yet that I should just warn you about, and that is the following. If you change one of the tests or you change the implementation and the tests begin to fail, so for example, if I change my expected result and I run this in IntelliJ, so I'm expecting one test to fail, but one and only one test, what I was surprised to see is that I'm having multiple tests fail. And if I come into the very first test that fails, the one that I was expecting to fail, um, it seems to be a cascading effect that each ever, every test after it fails with this failed to lock state directory, which I describe in the tutorial. The way to get around that is a bit of a hack. Um, you just come out, well, let's see, you come out to a terminal and you just manually re remove the directory in question here. So if I remove this directory, come back to the code, switch it back to what I expect to pass, rerun it, we should see this all pass again, or I'm expecting it all to pass again, and luckily it did. Um, I don't know exactly what's going on here. It's not necessarily an SBT thing, because if I run this in, I mean, it's not necessarily an IntelliJ thing. That's what I originally thought. But if I run this also in um, SBT, we'll see, we'll see the same results. So if I go, I guess I changed it back. If I go and make that this way, save it, reload, we'll see the same type of behavior when I run test where Every test after the failure, the first failure cascades. So again, we saw eight here. Um, I haven't, I don't know really what's going on. I mean, you can see here that we're getting a lock exception. Um, and, but the first test that fails, uh, let's see. You know, if we caught the exception that maybe happens during the test um, and then somehow released the lock, I don't know yet. Maybe the other tests wouldn't fail. Um, I haven't gone that far, and I didn't really want to pet, put um, catch code in, in Scala. Um, it didn't seem, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe one of you have got an idea on helping me improve this and how we can make this a little bit more resilient to individual test failures. I'll leave that up to you. I'm totally open. I'm totally open to receive suggestions here because I learn from you um, and I appreciate when you've got suggestions or ideas or even questions that you might have after viewing the screencast and reading the tutorial. So check it out. Um, there should be a link to the tutorial. Let me know and hopefully this helps. Take care.